good morning, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We certainly thank God for uh, this beautiful day that he has allowed us to be a part of. I thank you for uh, a man being with me this morning as we look at the word of God and because it adds value to our lives, especially during these difficult times that we are going through. And I know a lot of times you, you'd ask the question, amen, because everything that's uh, going on around us seems to be kind of falling in upon us. And, and you're probably wondering uh, how we can get through this. And, and I think that in the book of First Peter, the fifth chapter, verses 6 through 10, it kind of gives us some encouraging words concerning uh, what we need to do and how we need to react to these troubling times that we are facing now. In the fifth chapter of First Peter, we have these words recorded beginning in verse number six. He said, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in all your brethren that are in the world. Verse number 10 states, but the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. These are the encouraging words that we have coming from uh, First Peter and the fifth chapter. He's telling us that how we can get through this and whatever the this is in your life because we all are going through uh, some difficult circumstances and difficult things as we live in these difficult times and face these difficult problems. And what we need to understand is that Christ equips and empowers us to rise from every difficult period of time in our lives, and he allows us to enter new seasons of new life, new growth, new possibilities, new productivity. We have made it through the ice age of February. We are working through the damage caused by frozen and busted pipes. We are praying that the enormous use of gas and electricity will not force us into bankruptcy. We are hoping and praying that the COVID virus is being brought under control. We are lamenting the loss of over a half million individual lives to the deadly virus. Yes, I believe that in spite of all we have been through and we are going through, that we will be victorious. Let me tell you, how I believe it can be done. And I think that's found in this first Peter, the fifth chapter, verses six through 10. First of all, Peter tells us that uh, concerning humility, he said, humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God. We can't get it in our mind that, that we can handle these situations that we are facing right now. We don't have the power. We are finite creatures. We are limited to what we can do, but we serve a powerful God. There's nothing is impossible with him. So what we need to do is that we need to walk and live in humility. And that word humility means lowliness of mind. It described the attitude of one who willingly serves even in the lowest of tasks. Jesus 
gave us a perfect example of this. Jesus tying a towel uh, on himself and washing the disciples' feet is a great illustration of humility. Proverbs 3 and 34 says, God is opposed to the proud, but give a grace or favor to the humble. What we need to do is be submissive to God. Come before his presence with thanksgiving and bless his holy name. Then it tells us, amen, that we are to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God not under the pressures of this world, not under the persecution of our enemies, not under uh, the pressure from our loved ones or from the world to conform to its image, but we are to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. The mighty hand of God is descriptive of God's sovereign power. And whether for deliverance or testing or for chastening or in persecution for, for blessings, we ought to know that all the suffering that we are going through, that God is going to exalt us at the proper time. And I want you to know, I said at the proper time. When you, not when you feel like that you've had enough, or not when you feel like you've done enough, he will exalt us at the proper time. When we learn the lesson that he's trying to teach us, when we have gone through the pressure of the trials and tribulations that he is allowing us to go through to strengthen us, that is the time that he will exalt us when we finish that course. And we're, we're living in a harsh and arrogant, arrogant world. We're surrounded by selfish and stubborn people. Humility is a hard task to accomplish without his help. I ought to have a witness there because we always want to give a person a piece of our mind. We, we always think that we have the best ideas and that and oftentimes we will say it's my way or the highway. That's not humility. That's stubbornness and that's selfishness. We ought to listen to the word of God and we ought to bow before his divine presence. And please be obedient to the unction of the Holy Spirit as he's trying to direct our path. Therefore, we have to humble ourselves under God's hand, trusting that he's going to bring us through this more than a conqueror. And the next thing he says in the scripture text that we're reading today, therefore, the trust factor must be put to work. He said, cast in verse number seven, all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. In other words, we humble ourselves and we turn it all over to him. We admit humility is being submissive, amen, to, to God that we can't handle what we're going through right now, but he can. We have to trust the fact that he can. And we have to cast all of our cares, all of our anxiety, all of our frustrations, all of our problems, give it or give them to him. Let him handle it. Let him take care of these difficult things that we don't have the power to overcome in our life. The difficult things that are overwhelming us in our life. The difficult things that are frustrating us in our life. Don't worry. Pray about it. Turn it over to him. Put it in his hands. In his hands. Turn it loose. Let him work it out. Psalms 55 and 22 says, Cast your burdens upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never, never 
suffer the righteous to be moved. I like that, man. That's encouraging. That security, realizing that he will never suffer the righteous to be what? Moved. And that word casting means that you're throwing something on someone or on something. Turn it over to Jesus. He will work it out in your favor. Be, be mindful that nothing is impossible with God. Then Peter tells us that in verse number eight, he said, be of a vigilant or be sober. Be sober, be vigilant. And he's talking about self-control. And on a physical level, sober means to means to have self-control in relationship to intoxication. It includes ordering and balancing life's important issue, which requires the discipline of mind and body that avoids the intoxicating allurements of the world. Man, the world has a lot of intoxicating allurements. It has a lot of things that can tempt us. It can has a lot of things that can get us off of the right road. The world has a lot of detours that if we're not prayerful and cautious, we will get off the path that leads, amen, to joy, peace, and prosperity and take a detour into the world's allurements and the world's temptation and enticement. See, the devil... He can't stop you from being a child of God. He can't take your salvation away, but he can put roadblocks in your path. And that's what he does with allurements that intoxicate your mind. The love of money is one of those. Illicit sex and, and pride and jealousy and ego tripping and selfishness, all of those things are intoxicating allurements of the world and we have to what be sober we have to have discipline in our lives that we don't run start running after those things rather than running and seeking jesus christ he says be humble be of a sober spirit in other words, self-control, discipline your life that God can use every aspect and every talent and ability that you have for his glory and for the help of humankind. Then next he tells us, a man that be sober, be vigilant. And then he tells us something about our enemy. He tells us something about who we are dealing with. He said, because your adversary, the devil, is a, is a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. In other words, Peter is saying that we don't need to let our guard down. We need to be on guard every second, every minute, every hour of our life because the devil is on the prowl. He's on the prowl. He's fine trying to find a way to get into your life. Your adversary, the devil, a man, is seeking to find a, a crack in your armor that he can attack you. We can't let our guard down. The enemy is looking for an opening to get into our lives, to impede our progress, to undermine our purpose, to destroy our testimony, to separate us from the household of faith. The enemy is always trying to plant seeds of doubt in our mind. He never gives up. He's always on his job. He never takes a big vacation. He never takes a breath break. He's 24-7, 365 days a year. He's trying to find a way into our life. You cannot 
let your guard down. You must keep your war clothes on and you need to be in a state of preparation and be ready to deal with him when he attacks because he will attack you every opportunity that he gets. See, the, the AWOL must return to duty. The sleepers must awaken. The watchman must sound the alarm. We need to be alert because Satan seeks to devour and he easily can deceive. And you, you're not above deception. He's a master of deception. He's a master of influence. He knows how to get you think, to do things that you never thought that you would do. Look at in the Genesis account of creation, how he easily deceived Eve in Eden's perfect environment. He easily deceived Eve in Eden's perfect environment. Look how he enamored David with a naked woman, a naked married woman on a rooftop, and he committed adultery with her. And then he gave him the deception that when she got pregnant, that he could pull the wool over her husband's eyes and pretend that it was his child rather than David's child. See, he's a master of deception and he gets us caught up in so many traps. And we, every time we get trapped, we find another sin to try to get us out of the trap that we've got ourselves in. He's a master of deception and he never gives up. He never keeps, he never keeps quiet. He's always on his job. So we have to be on our job. We have to be alert because he is a wily coyote. He's always looking for a way to hurt and harm us. So we have to what? Keep our God up. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. He wants to destroy us. And we have to be on guard every moment of our lives. He'll try to get you. You need to watch out. Then the next thing we need to do, amen, we need to be resolute. And that word resolute, it means determined, purposeful, and unwavering. Look at verse number nine in the first Peter uh, chapter five, amen. It said, whom resisted steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. It says brethren. It's talking about the family of God. Every child of God has to deal with the, uh, the onslaught of Satan's attack. Everybody that's a child of God who is at war with the enemy, the adversary, the devil, amen. We have to keep our guard up and we have to be resolute. We have to be determined, unwavering, and purposeful in what we do every minute of our life. We have to resist him in steadfast faith. In other words, faith that's unmovable. Faith that, that's not going to waver and, and with every wind that blows and every fad that comes, amen, that we have to be focused on our duty, on our job. And that word resist means to take a stand against. You know he's, uh, he's out to attack you, to destroy you, and that means you have to stand against him, not run from him but stand against him. Don't allow him to push you around, but what? Stand firm in your faith. Don't compromise who you are uh, or be wavering, amen, in the word of God and God's, uh, uh, God's uh, plan for your life. You be what? 
determined to do the will of God in your life and determined to stand against the enemy. That word resist again means to take a stand against. And if, you, if you're not against something, you're either for it or you're compromising in it. I'm going to say that again. If you're not against something, you're either compromising in it or you are for it. When you fight the devil, you have to use all the resources that God has given you. You have to stand firm in your faith. And that word firm means solid. It means balanced. It means not easily moved. And, you know, we have some wavering Christians that, that they'll turn the radio on and they'll listen to uh, every voice that they hear uh, on the religious programs and the teaching and the other doctrines and, and that are contrary to the word of God. And, and, and they'll try to build a, a different doctrine or a different word than, or they'll add to or take away from the word of God. My brothers and sisters, God don't need no help. What he said in his word, he wants us to accept it and live our lives by it. We're not to add anything to it or take away anything from it. What God has said in his word is what God means for our life. So we have to stand firm on that. And one thing that I always ask individuals when they ask me questions. If I don't know, I say, well, I don't know. Oh, let, let me find out. Let me check it out. I'm not going to be flippant in what I tell someone. I, I want to make sure that I tell them the truth and there is no error in it. And if I mess up and say something that's not true, I want to be able to correct that because I want nothing but the truth of God to come out of my mouth. So you need to be firm in your convictions concerning the word of God, stand on the word of God. And that word faith in the text is that's confidence in God. That's confidence in God. Matter of fact, the proverbial writer said, trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. We can't be leaning to our own understanding. We, we can't have opinions we, uh, of how we feel about it. We have to stick with what God says about it in his word. It's tough. And it's not easy fighting the enemy. But God has equipped us. And he has enabled us to deal and fight valiantly and to stand firm on his word. He's given us all the research, resources that we need. And, and he wants us to know that, that oftentimes we sometimes feel like we, we're on the battlefield by ourselves. But Peter addressed this. He said, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And what is he saying? He said believers in other places are experiencing similar attacks. And my brothers and sisters, if you're going through some stuff right now that you, you need to understand, don't, don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't pity yourself. You realize that you are not alone as a child of God that you are not being picked on as a child of God. Every believer in Jesus Christ is at war with the adversary. We all are fighting in the same battle. And yes, there's going to be some suffering and pain and even some casualties. You need to get your mind Focus on the fact that you are in a battle. You are fighting for the souls of humanity. You are God's ambassador and you have the ministry of reconciliation 
reconciling the lost to Christ. And Satan does not want anybody to be saved. He wants a army <laughs> in hell with him. He wants company. So our job is to try to thwart his attack and thwart the lies that he's putting out by giving them the truth of God's word, giving them the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are not alone in this war. We all should be what? Fighting to accomplish God's purpose. God, he allows painful testing to accomplish his perfect work in the lives of his elect. He's going to allow us to go through some things that he's shaping and molding us into a vessel of beauty that he could use and he can point out, as he said, have you considered my servant Job? God wants us to be the cream of the crop. He wants us to be the light of the world. The individuals that can draw individuals to themselves and share with them the word of God, that individuals can leave the darkness and come into the marvelous light. Yes, it's painful sometimes. And yes, we do have to go through some stuff sometimes. But be mindful that no matter what we may dealing, be dealing with or we may be going through, we still have hope. We still have hope. Be mindful that the battle is not ours. The battle is the Lord. We still have hope. In verse number 10 of 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, and he tells us these words of encouragement. He lets us know that trouble is not going to last always. It's only for a season. He says, after we have suffered for a little while. After we have suffered for a little while. He says, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal, to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. He's going to do all of those things in our life as we are going through the trials and tribulations. He's going to perfect us, confirm us, strengthen us, and establish us. Now that word perfect means to bring to wholeness. It's talking about spiritual maturity. He's going to grow us in him till we manifest Jesus Christ in our life in the manner that brings glory to God and it leads the lost to Christ. Spiritual maturity, wholeness in our lives. He says he's going to confirm us. He's going to set us in place, the place that he wants us to be. And he's going to say, that you are not guilty, that that you have paid, that I have paid the price that was required for their freedom. I'm saying that my seal is upon them. They are mine and I am theirs. He confirms that who he is in our life and he confirms who we are in the body of Christ. Then he says, strengthen. And that word strengthen in this text means to make sturdy. And, and make sturdy, something that's strong, that, that's dependable. And it, it, it's kind of like that after you have bought something, a man to utilize and in service, a man, and, and some things that you buy, a man, they, they're not made out of the proper material. They're, they're made out of... Uh, uh, cheap uh, material, uh, material that that's that's not not very good, uh, of poor quality, and, and and it breaks real quick or it breaks easily. 
But that word sturdy means that you're able to go through some stuff. You're able to go through some stuff. That means that you have not worn out yet. Yet you're still fighting the good fight of faith. That's what God wants to do when he allows us to go through trials and tribulation and testing. He's trying to make us sturdy, trying to strengthen us, to give us perseverance and endurance that we'll be able to weather the storms that will come upon our lives. We ought to be able as children of God to be able to take some stuff to let some stuff roll off our backs, to be strong in difficult situations, not to fall apart when, when the times get tough in our life, not to sit down on God's program when the enemy is persecuting or afflicting on every hand. We shouldn't be giving up. We should be what? Sturdy and enduring and persevering, persevering through the difficult times in our life and dealing with the problems and issues that this world and the adversary is throwing against us. If we were not children of God, we would not be at war with Satan right now. My brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord. Be of good courage. We have hope because he says that he's going to what? Establish us. That means he's to lay as a foundation. He's given us the foundation to build on. He's given us the foundation to stand on. And what we have to do is build our house or build our life on the true foundation, which is Jesus Christ, the mighty Lamb of God. These terms, all of these terms, that I've just spoken about indicates strength, stability, and immovable. It means we cannot be moved by the things of this world, that we are going to be steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord. Ephesians, the third chapter, verses 17 through 19 states, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the, sa all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ, which surpasseth knowledge, that ye may be filled up to all the fullness of God. God wants us to have everything that he has to offer in our life. He wants us to enjoy all the benefits that he can give to us. And yes, the road may get a little rough and it may get tough sometimes in our life, but we have hope in him. We know what he's doing in our lives, that after we have suffered a little while, he's going to make us perfect. He's going to establish us, stabilize us. He's going to strengthen us and he's going to settle us in on the sure foundation. And then he closes it out with these words, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. See, Christ has a plan for our lives. He sent his son down through 42 generations to accomplish his plan for us. He's working in us that we might be able to manifest him to a world of this living in darkness and sin. It's our job. It's our duty. He's given us everything that we need to accomplish his purpose. So what we need to do 
is learn how to get through these trying times. And he gave us the greatest opportunity when he sent his son to die for our sins, to be all that we could be in him if we accept him, if we are obedient to his word. We can get through this stuff and we will be more than conquerors. Jesus Christ came down through 42 generations, born in Bethlehem of Judea, laid in a manger. When he was of age, he began to walk the dusty streets of Jerusalem. He performed miracles. He opened blinded eyes, unstopped deaf ears. He called the lame man to walk, and he caused a dead man to rise from the grave. We can get through this, just like he helped them to get through uh, those uh, trials and tribulations and afflictions that they had in their life. He was kind. He showed his loving kindness. He, he showed his compassion to all those he came in contact with. He allowed mean men to put nails in his hand and spikes in his feet. They hung him high and stretched him wide on an old rugged cross. Then they dropped a cross in the earth on a hill called Calvary. The Bible said that he hung there from the sixth to, to the ninth hour. He said the sun refused to shine. There was earthquakes in diverse places. He can help us get through this. He can help us get through this. There was a repentant thief on the cross. He was dying in his sins, but he came to repentance. And he said, when you enter into your kingdom, Lord, remember me. He called him Lord. He said, Lord, remember me. And Jesus said, this day that thou shalt be with me in paradise. He got through it because of the love of Jesus Christ and the compassion of Jesus. The Bible said Jesus laid his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died. He died. They took him down and laid him in a borrowed tomb. And he laid there all night Friday and all day Saturday, but early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. The Bible said that he ascended up into heaven, sitting on the right hand of the Father. And he promised that he's going to come back and receive us unto himself, that we can all go home to be with him forever and ever. We can get through this because we have the hope of glory to come. Jesus Christ, our Father, our God, our Savior is coming back for us. What we have to do in the meantime is that we have to be humble. We have to cast all our cares upon him. We have to be disciplined in our lives. We have to humble ourselves under his mighty hand and allow him to exalt us in due season. We have to wait on the Lord until our change comes. My brothers and sisters, we can get through this through the grace of God and the mercy of God when we are obedient and when we trust in his holy word. May God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer. Bye.